Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode what I'd like to do is to do some logistics drones from Pneumaticraft Repressurized. So let's start with doing those. Right, and here are the drones from Pneumaticraft. And these are the ones with the logistics drones. I think the only difference between this one is one's charged up and the other isn't. Yeah, exactly. Zero bar and ten bar. Uh, these are harvesting drones here. And these are the, the drones where you have to program the drones. But with the logistics drones, you don't have to do that. And the recipe for this, I found it this, oops, press try, try that again <laughs> without pressing the R on the thing. And the recipe for this here is um, fairly straightforward. It's four of these turbine rotors, which are basically three blades around a compressed iron like this. We've made the blades before. They're fairly straightforward as well. They're just one, two pieces of redstone, one piece of gold in the pressure chamber. And that will make one of these. So with, I think that was three times four is 12 gold and 24 redstone you get enough to make one of these devices so i've made a few already so let's go and have a look at those and they're in the where i've been doing this it's been raining the whole time i've been waiting to make this episode <laughs> so i'll just put up with it now these work very much like the other drones that i well i haven't drones. i mean the um the other way the, the mechanics work for logistics we had to look at that in the last episode so here are the two drones I've got, and we can colour these drones. For example, let's take some yellow dye and some cyan dye. The standard colour is black, but I'm going to just colour these two drones just for the sake of doing it so we can see there's a difference between the two. That's the cyan dye and this one's the yellow dye. Like that. And then we need these logistics frames in here. There's four different types of frame that we need for this. Uh, in the previous one, I think what we did is use these logistics frames here and I move this around a bit and you can color these too so for instance this one's actually colored yellow but as far as I can understand this the, the color makes no difference whatsoever and this one is I've changed this slightly because what I want to do is to put onto this here if I right click this if I yeah that's right oops I've just taken it off <laughs> which I didn't mean to do but this logistics one here, if we look at this one, it should be ready a recipe for 16 buckets of oil. So the 16 buckets of oil is what you take into this, and the hopper itself is full of oil at the moment. This is a liquid hopper from Pneumatic Crafting. So let's put that back onto there like this. And these are request requester frames. I did put that, yes, I did good. We did it on the right bit. So that one here was being fed from back here, and it requires three bars of pressure to do that. And I don't think the range is actually limited. I'm not sure if you can pressurise things on the way. I also coloured this one yellow, and this is the tank. The tank empties out as it starts to get full, and I can fill it up with, with the pump jack, of course. So now, let's have a look at these different types of um, fra uh, provider frames or frames. So we've got the requester frame here, which is the one that receives items. This is a provider frame, which provides the items, strangely enough. Now we've got here's a storage frame, so this is going to store items, and when the requester frame requests it, it will also take it out of here. And this one's the default storage, so basically overflow will go into that, into this one like that. So for example, let's get a bucket, I've got a bucket here with me. This has got 1500 millibuckets of kerosene in here. This has got 1200 and this is empty. So what we can do is we can make, say this one here is the default frame this one is a storage frame and then this one is the requester frame like this and we have to go and make a provider frame in a second like that and then we can then configure those so we've got the configurator here the logistics configurator and you just right click the middle of this so what we're actually providing here was kerosene wasn't it and I'm pretty sure you have to do this whether you like it or not so we select one of those so that's going to provide it and you can't you can't right click this to increase the number the same is true for this one over here put the let's configure this one this again is the storage trim so let's get up some kerosene again of course this works with items as well we'll have a look at that in a in a while and again you can't click this one because it just takes height it just takes it something just got zapped then and this one is the um requester and then in this one here you can put a logistics frame on it that's this one and you can then select this one and we can set 
hot spring water kerosene I think it's this one anyway and then you can actually right click on this one to say it's going to store two buckets so when I put the drone down here it's going to fly up in fact and put in it's already pressurized this drone that's the yellow one it's going to take the, the fluid out of here and put it into here I think they might in fact be taking it out of here so what we'll have to do get the bucket out again like this and have a look at this so that's now got two buckets of kerosene this has still got the 1539 and this one's now empty so this one actually took the first it took to the fluid out of here that's the default and then it took it out of here and then it's put it into there so that's how this is working now i think it's night time yes it's night time so what we can then do this is a a night a daylight center which i right clicked if you right click a daylight center it turns it into a, a daytime center this is now giving an output here of zero no output because it's obviously night time if i turn it on here you get a power of 11 to sing that it's actually night but what we can also do here in this mod in the macrograph for pressurized we have these a kerosene lamp fairly cheap actually so look at the recipe for this so it's just three compressed ingots two glass and it doesn't matter what color the glass is and a bucket and you can put this down like this onto this one and then lights up an area and you can configure this a maximum distance is 30 blocks so we can set this to 30 blocks here and then it uses up fuel it actually uses up kerosene fairly quickly if you have a look around at the moment it's always on and in fact what i want this to be on is i only want this to be on with a high signal like that if i turn it off it'll go off and then it'll slowly dark, darken down as we do, as you see it's gone out if I turn that back on again you can actually see it's a lot um 10 blocks it didn't take my 30 blocks why not maybe i have to press tab on it or something i'm not sure and then on a on an interpolate signal which actually i don't know what that means but it's on so it must be to do with this the, the length of the signal here the daylight sensor and you can see this is actually lighting up a very large area but it does it does use fuel up fairly quickly when we're doing this as you can see the fuel gets used up fairly quickly so the low obviously the lower it is so if we make this eight eight blocks it's going to use up fuel a lot slower so as it, there it's now it's gone down to five blocks current range is five blocks which is strange um, but as you see the kerosene is going down much more slowly so now we can put a request to frame on this put one of those on and then I can say I want to get kerosene in here yeah I need to get the configurator of course right click it with the configurator at the moment we can there's one bucket this thing contains can take two buckets now you can see the drone is coming here and actually filling this up to be able to look at this again you see now it's full with two buckets of kerosene it goes down and then the drone will go and get some more and bring it back again until it actually keeps it keeps it topped up and which one's it taking you out of it it'll be taking it out of this out of this one here as you can see it's gone down a reasonable amount but this one's still at two two buckets now what we can also do with this it goes back again and gets another another bit pushes you out of the way by the way these things do can be quite irritating <laughs> when you're standing on something near some electric wire they're also susceptible to high voltage as well so the or uncovered cables this one i've put some chisel and bits what frame around it which is basically a frame just to protect it maybe i have to do it further along here as well too but that's more difficult because of the sag in the cable but when the drone flies over and i've set up for example over here this is lpg and i can set up a requester on this one as well saying lpg i would like to have this as a actually a requester is good then we configure this one first of all so we want it to be lpg like that and then it'll, it doesn't have to can't specify the amount it'll just put lpg into this um what did i just do blue okay so it'll put a bucket of lpg in here that's fine and you can right click it to get two buckets uh and the drone will come along and fill it up with some lpg if it's got place to take it from 
Now, here we have the refinery. We've looked at the refinery before. And one of the tricks with the refinery is to cover up the sides or, or the faces of these things so that at the end it doesn't lose so much heat. So I'm using some trapdoors to do that. So we can turn the refinery on as well because the refinery basically all it needs is heat. So if we come along here, for example, and turn it, see at the moment it's got no, no heat, apply more heat, and it tells you how much it needs. It basically needs to come up to here, which is 101 degrees or 110 degrees, and it'll start to refine stuff. Now, in here I've got a vortex chamber, and I need to configure this vortex chamber so that it's actually on. At the moment it's turned off because I right click this for that, and now that heats up. When this heats up, it's going to start powering it up from the pressure in here. This thing here, if we look at this one, let's make sure I don't get to click it with the right thing. You see the temperature here is 51 degrees. And if it's so it's turned off at the moment. So let's turn it on. And as you turn it on, the temperature in here is going down because of this vortex has got the cold side here and the hot side here. The hot side is actually going to start pumping stuff into here like this. Let's have a look at this. So now we've got some LPG, some gasoline, some kerosene, and some diesel. And you can see that this fuel is getting pumped in and out all the time as it as it's using it. And the temperature is 880 degrees, so it's very hot. I don't think this thing blows up if it gets too hot. So what I've been doing is I want to get into this thing here, some kerosene, and some uh, and this one's got gasoline. So the gasoline will process itself into kerosene. Uh, LPG I mean an LPG with some coal will make some liquid plastic so we can put some frames on these as well so first of all we'll put a request to frame on here for gasoline so here's a, um, the blue one so we want one blue one for gasoline and one for L LPG so let's get those set up so we'll do the, L the gasoline one first of all and there's two types of gasoline the other ones we don't care about so much uh, and the one that's being produced here is this one from pneumatic craft I think but you can do both in fact there's no reason why you can't do both they can request either type of gasoline but this is the one we want so we're going to put this one on top of here like this and this one here we're going to request LPG now the LPG is going to come from somewhere else it's got several places it can come from one of the places it can come from is the refinery and the other place it's going to come from is here in fact, I haven't configured this correctly. We'll fix that in a second. And I'm also going to fix this as well because it also needs coal. So let's request some coal in here. Can I do it? Yes, I can. And I want 64 coal. So we select the coal. And now we can make 64 coal. Which is right. So if you right click it, take you up 32, 64. And the same with this one. I want to get 16 buckets in here, I think. And then it'll keep this. this uh, thematic, thermo pneumatic processing plant filled up with ingredients so in like that so it's got to take the coal from somewhere and it's got to take the LPG from somewhere well one of the sources of LPG is here so it'll get pumped up automatically because this one's got a dispensing upgrade in it of course it also needs heat and it's not got any temperature at the moment and so does this one actually need they both need heat for it to work this one's full so I don't need to worry about it for the time being so now let's have a look at these and put onto these the provider frames you can see it's working away nicely now and if I hold shift down on here you'll see that this, this one here has got oil in tank one and LPG in tank two so we can put then on here a provider frame an active provider frame we could actually put a storage frame on here as well I think and it'll then provide that to that but it's not really a storage it is actually a provider so we'll configure this to be LPG and this time you can't right click it it just provides LP, LPG so when I right click this now the dr a drone may come along here and take some LPG in fact yes it is you can see it's going over there and it's actually filling up that tank over there with LPG we'll have a look at that in a second next one down here is this tank so let's have a look at that one and bare hand is, empty hand is probably the best thing so this one we're not sure which it is at the moment but i'm sure it's gasoline because we can tell and yes it is gasoline so we can put a, the next one we can do is put a gasoline on here let's do that <laughs> i think you just heard maybe you didn't hear it but the 
the robots just um, drones just got killed in fact it does tell you actually it's been unca uh, careless around <laughs> live wiring so let's look gasoline get this one done now we've got two different types of gasoline and it, this is the one I think that we're actually using but let's just check it I'll right click that one on here like that and come along here uh, it is the light one and you can see it's still going up so the next one down will be kerosene I'm going to shift hold on this one indeed it is so let's set the next one up for kerosene now this is actually where we get the kerosene from which is that one and then the last one will be diesel we need to check what type of diesel we've got in here let's have a look at this one ah can't do it like that in fact i probably put it on here have i nope i haven't so this is the darker the darker diesel i think so let's have a look what we got for diesels i think it's this one that's biodiesel and that's biodiesel so it is definitely that one so we can then put this onto there so these are all going to provide fluid to the different things and that's what happens to your drone if it hits the wires <laughs> i don't want it to hit the wires now there is a way to stop it doing that um oops i've just taken something off here which i didn't want to do put it back on again if you've got it in your hand it'll basically act like um, a wrench and takes it off so you've got to be careful when you do that so now we just we can close these up and the drone's not going to come there to that side we can open up a different face on this uh, probably i think the one i normally do is this one here and the drone will then take the stuff from here let's put down that's the that's the cyan one and we'll put the other one down they can both work at the same time and you can see it's taking they're both taking stuff around this one's going to be putting some gasoline into this tank here let's have a look at that one uh bucket i need don't i oops Something went wrong there. That tank is empty. That's got four thousand in it. That's got ten thousand kerosene. It's got a thousand kerosene. And this one here, it said, let's have a look. Oh, I don't want that. Put it back in there. Press shift on it. You can hold C on here. It's got twelve buckets and it's going up slightly. This one's full, sixteen thousand, and this has got four thousand. So it's basically filling up the diesel first to the ones which are nearest. So if you look at this, I've actually said this has got one bucket of diesel in it. And this one's got 12 buckets, which is the capacity of the metal barrel for immersive uh, engineering. So as you can see, these are coming along, filling stuff up. And because it's a bit lower down, they don't tend to hit this wire. And it asked me why. Well, it's just one of those things. Not that it makes any difference colours. They don't make any difference whatsoever. But you can see, now we should be getting some stuff maybe in here. What have we got up? 12... 12, 35, 1600, that's still not done anything here. I'm hoping this to actually get up. This is powered on, as you can see. But it's not doing very much for the time being because there's nothing actually working behind it. So there's just a little bit of pressure on here. Now the robots, the drones, need to be charged up. And the way you can charge them up is with the charging station. Uh, and what happens with the charging station, you need to put into a dispenser upgrade. I take the dispenser grade upgrade out. You'll see here it's not got these landing spikes on top of it. Let's put the dispenser grade upgrade back in again, and you will see it's now got these four pillars here, like that. And that allows the drone to come along here and charge up when the pressure, of course, is here is is reasonable. At the moment, it's quite low. The reason it's quite low is because of this. What I think I'm going to do is to actually reduce the pressure in this one if I've got space. I'm not sure I've got that much space to be honest with you. Especially here, for example. I don't need that anyway because the LPG is coming around. Um, and what I'm going to do is put a pressure tube on top of this one. So, we'll, first of all, we'll take this one off here a restrictor. And you can see that's losing the pressure. We can, we, can, we can seal this off actually. There you go. So, it's now sealed off. And you can right click these so they don't connect like that. So what I'm going to do put is onto here a, pre a pressure reducer. Let's have a look at one of those. Maybe I haven't tried this yet. It sort of came to me when I was talking about it. So I'll go and have to make another one of those. What I need is the, um, what's it called? It's name, I know what it looks like. It's a little blue thing. 
and they're usually at the beginning here when you've got these type of components uh, just a second I can't see it for trying so we'll look at the other page nope they're not there where is it it's to, we can actually have a look at the recipe probably easiest or it's what it's made from if I remember rightly it's made from oh, I can't see it don't ask me why it's these look at the uses of these we can should be able to make boxes this thing here the regulator tube where is it can't anyway we're going to make a regulator tube to make one of those we've got to make some of these everything's just crafting and that's that's basically four gold to make a pressure gauge so i'll make one of those and i'll come back in a second right i've got one so now we're just going to put this on the pipe and i want to do it on this side here so, and then we can put the that's oh, blowing up behind me so i need to why is that turning off? Probably this one is actually, yes, this is the one that's leaking. Because I haven't got any smart form of turning this one. So I'll just turn it off like that. At the moment, that is. So I'm getting a bit close to that cable. Well, it's protected, so that's okay. It actually affects me too, so I don't tend to jump on it as much as I was doing and getting zapped right. I'm a bit higher than I want to be. Let's see if we can get this pressure regulator on here. Uh, no, I can't. Hold a second. I'll tell you what, I'll do. I have to break this one. Shift right click that off, and then I'll pr probably be able to connect this in now. Um, let's just, I probably have to turn it off first of all. Oh, yes, that works. Good. And when you put a regulator on, it doesn't let the, the air out straight away, which is great. So now we can put this tube down. In fact, what I, uh, I think I will put down the advanced tube anyway. I think I probably don't need to put the advanced tube down anymore. But I do want to regulate this block. And I think it should be accessible from here. Let's turn that, close that up and put down a potentiometer here. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you, whether it'll reach, but I think this will be the block. Oh yeah, we can remove this one, of course. Let's just need an ax. So that's actually in the same block space so I have to remove it we can put down the potentiometer here then we can have a look at this one maybe if we're right if we're lucky so it's got zero pi at the moment so we'll give 7.5 bar so that, let's give that uh, let's reduce the pressure on it there probably we'll do what's we got on this one this time still got zero so that's not working here oh, that's a shame I probably have to put you tell you what we'll do Let's put it on top of it. So now I need a big axe to break that on. And you can see these trapdoors are always getting affected by this. So if I put it on top of it here, can I do that? Let's put up some pressure here and see if that's then affected. Yes, it is. So 5.5 bars maximum. So that's just good. So let's bring it up a little bit higher. So it's 4.5 bar. Let's bring it right up to the top towards the top here so that's 2.5 bar and that's going to be fine I think so let's put this back the trap door down here and close it up so keep these things keep warm as well so now when I turn this on whoops this is never going to get too high pressure so the pressure is not going to be see now it's stuck at 2.5 bar I'm hoping this has actually got enough power and it has yes good so that should keep it cool I'm hoping that I don't use all the power up doing that. So the drones are coming around, taking out the, the fluids from in here. We have to look at that again now, of course. See, the gasoline's got nowhere to go. And I think gasoline should be coming down here. If I open up this one here like that, it should give it a space for, the, for that drone to fly into. We can open up both of them. So one of the drones may fill this up with gasoline if it's not already full. So 2.5. It should in fact pill it. Oh well, I didn't check what I've got set up for this for gasoline. You need 16 buckets. I've only got one, so that's why. Let's give it. Let's give it 16 buckets. Oops, left click it brings it down. Now we should see the robots coming along here and filling it. The drones filling this up. Right, they've landed on there, which is the incorrect place. So I have to close this one. 
So now they go down there, and this should then start to get some fuel in it. Let's have a look. You see, now it's filled up. Um, the drones don't do anything when it's at, when where it wants to go, to, and nothing else to do. So there's nothing else to do at the moment until we start to take out some plastic from in here, which is what we're going to be using a lot of plastic because I've been making these things. So all of these programming pieces for the real drone, this is the real drone. The recipe for this one, which will do all of this next episode, is we have to use a printed circuit board. A printed circuit board requires six pieces of plastic just to make these capacitors. So they're fairly expensive. The printed circuit board, but the pressure's not very high, this one bar's fine. Uh, so that's basically it. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've learned something about logistics drones. They're uh, actually a lot of fun. So next episode, we're going to be looking at proper drones. Uh, and we're going to... Oh, you see, these have got charged up because I'm, being sta I'm standing on the charging station. <laughs> so we're going to look at pro uh, proper drones next time and start to program those. So until then, bye for now. See you next time.